How's it going everyone? This is Coffin Brood. I'm back. So today I found out that apparently Newegg suspended my account because I used a different billing address than my physical address. So now I have to wait even longer to get the RAM that I purchased so that I can upgrade my new computer to 32 gigabytes. I don't understand why in the fuck they decided to suspend my account. Anyway, enough of that crap. Let's get on with today's stories. As a young child, my mom worked and went to school, and my dad was a construction worker, which often meant he was out of town. This left my grandma, who was retired, to watch us since they could not afford daycare. I was four, my little sister was two, and my big sister was nine. One day, my grandmother decided since the weather was nice, it would be a good day to take my two sisters and I to the park. My little sister and grandma mostly played on the swings and, and they hanged out on a blanket in the toddler area of the park. My older sister had met up with a friend from her school and was playing, which left me on the jungle gym, also on the toddler side of the playground, happily playing with the two other young girls around my age. It's a bit fuzzy what exactly we were playing and talking about. I mean, this was almost 25 years ago now, but I do clearly remember one of the little girls I was playing with bragging about how she and her family lived in a van how she had lots of Barbies in her van obviously being a four year old little girl I loved Barbies next thing I know the other little girl had been playing with asked if she could bring her Barbies on the playground she said no because they'd get dirty but her dad wanted us to get into the van with her to play the other little girl left to ask him, her mom. I was going to ask my grandma, but she was busy with my little sister, so I thought it would be okay to just go. All it took was my grandma looking away for a split second, and this little girl's dad was leading her and I away by the hand. When my grandma saw this, she became upset with the man and made him let go of me. I remember clear as day him telling her, it's okay, we are just going to my van to play Barbies. And my grandmother responding with, she doesn't get into anyone's car but mine. If you want her to play Barbies, bring them out here. The man just shrugged and walked off with the little girl and got into their van and left. It never quite dawned on me how weird this was until I had my own kids. I was 13 when this took place. Before I start the story, I just want to give you some background information. This happened with my three best friends. I'll call them Glasses, Redhead, and Curly. Redhead was very adventurous, liked to push the boundaries, sneak out and stay out long into the night. Glasses was kind of influenced by Redhead but had very strict parents and sometimes wouldn't be allowed out. Curly was a stickler for the rules and would rarely follow us crazy kids and our weird shenanigans. She was also the oldest in our group. Now I will begin this story. First incident. We were riding our bikes along our neighborhood at night. We liked to do this a lot and knew the best routes to take. We cycled up to the top of a huge hill with an amazing drop. The hill gave you a rush of adrenaline you'd get from a roller coaster. So we were rolling down the hill when this van pulled up nearly hitting us. Redhead screamed, what the fuck is wrong with you? And we all stared into the abyss the van drove into. Hoping to get the license plate, that's when we saw the car's headlights turn on. We pedaled away turning back to see 
if it was following us. It was. Curly was crying and glasses looked like she was about to pass out. Eventually we lost the guy, but we were pretty shaken up. The second incident, a month later, we were riding our bikes at night again when Glasses wanted to go up to the bathroom. We didn't want to lose her at night, so we waited in front of our house. We were cracking jokes and being hyper when suddenly we hear, Hey! yelled from across the street. Glasses comes up and asks, What? What's going on? Then we hear, Hey, come over here, you little bitches. Not so brave now. We all cycled home and Redhead claimed she saw a van just like the one we saw a month ago. The third incident. This is the final and most terrifying incident. It happened solely to Redhead. We were cycling and it was daytime when this black van drove past us. It stopped, drove back, so it was in front of us and said to Redhead, Don't fuck with me. And then listed her address. It again drove off before we could get a license plate. After that, Redhead received threatening letters in the mail. They got so bad, Redhead and her family moved from North Carolina to her grandparents' house in Massachusetts. We recently found her via Snapchat but the horrors of those nights still terrify her. So, I'm around 8 or 9 when this story happened. Unfortunately, this man still lives near us. It had to be around winter time, and I was with my little cousin. So my cousin and I were walking her dog. We know we live in a bad part of New York, but we didn't expect this. So as we are outside walking around her apartment building, some random old ass dude from across the street asked us why our dog didn't have a little jacket. We said we left it upstairs and tried to leave it at that. Then he said that he had a dog we should go see up in his apartment, later changing the story to the pet store up the block. He looks very stern after a while, and then we said we're okay, it's fine, and he started to cross over to us and walk a lot faster. I told my cousin to run because he was ready to grab us. Then I had to look back for my cousin since she runs slow and I went up to grab her. It's been a few years, I'm now 14, but he hasn't moved from next to us, and I'm kind of scared when she leaves the house when I'm not here. So this happened when I was 14 in high school. We had to do a one week internship in December to collect more experience, etc. I chose to do mine at a flower shop. The owner was very strict and wanted me there at precise hours from 9am to 12pm, then from 2pm to 6pm. This happened on the last day. I came back from lunch break and I was going to cross the road to go to the shop when the owner stopped me on the sidewalk. She told me she had a delivery to make an emergency for a funeral and that she would be back in 20 minutes or so. She asked me if I could wait for her at the porch and I remember saying yes despite being extremely annoyed when she was the one that wanted to be extra punctual and on time. But whatever. I went over to the porch and waited there. The porch was actually in a triangular shape, leaving towards the door. After around 10 minutes of waiting, bored out of my mind, a guy walked up to me. He was in his late 20s or mid 30s maybe, and he walked up to me with a huge smile on his face. He had a hole between two front teeth. At the time, despite being only 14, I was painfully aware of stories of kidnapping 
trafficking and all of the other dark things that could happen. My mom made sure that I was aware of all the risks a stranger could represent for a young child, teenager. And because of that, I was and still am extremely mistrusting of strangers and adults. So when this guy stood in front of me, I immediately wanted to leave, especially because his smile made me feel really creeped out. He blocked my way while standing in front of me. I was back at the entrance of the shop and he was trapping me inside of the porch. He started asking me personal questions like, what's your name? How old are you? Do you go to school nearby? As I refused to answer, he said that he wasn't going to hurt me. He didn't want to do anything bad to me, just talking. As he wouldn't leave, I grew impatient and agitated, so I started answering his questions in an attempt to make him leave by satisfying his curiosity. I told him both my age and my name before he asked me if my mom was here. I lied and said that if she worked in the flower shop, and that I was waiting for her. The guy kept talking to me after that, but he eventually left with this sentence that made me paranoid for months. Hey, it's fine. I'll see you another time. I always see you walking around those streets, but you never see me. He left me there and continued to wherever he was going. In my panic, I texted one of my friends that I knew was still on lunch break and told her what had happened. She sent me laughing emojis and said that some guy just tried to flirt with me in the street and that it was really no big deal. I felt an immense feeling of dread and remember thinking, oh, I'm being paranoid again. Looking back at it now, I don't think she was taking it seriously enough. I put my phone back in my pocket still terrified and only two minutes later the owner came back. I was on the verge of tears but did what she asked me to for the rest of the afternoon. Went home at six and never spoke of this to anyone. I still asked my father to drive me around until the end of the school year because I kept remembering the creepy man and the fact that he sees me but I never did see him. I never saw the man again, but to this day, I always check if someone is following me or if I see a familiar face in the street. If you are new, go ahead and hit the like button and subscribe to my channel as it really helps me out. And if you are already subscribed, welcome back and thank you for subscribing.